Welcome. In this video, I'm going to be comparing the virtualization capabilities of a Synology DS918 Plus and a QNAP TS453BE. So these two pieces of equipment have the same processor in them. They both have 16 gig of RAM and they both have four Western Digital 4 gigabyte drives. Um, the Synology is set up as uh, SHR1 and the QNAP is set up as RAID 5 but they're essentially the same there. The Synology has BTRFS file system and the QNAP has EXT4. So I'll put a link in the description of my playlist for Synology and for QNAP and I'll also put a link to the hardware I'm using and if you use those links it helps me out a little bit and doesn't cost you anything extra. So in my comparison here I'm going to be setting up a an Ubuntu desktop um, instance on each machine. So the Synology I've had longer and it has other services running on it uh, like backup I've turned that off. They both had surveillance station running. I had disabled those. So um, this may not be a perfect comparison, but you'll get an idea of what it's like to run virtualization on either of the two machines. So on the left, I have Synology. I'm on the virtual machine tab. I think it starts up on overview, but you have to click on virtual machine. I'll click create there. On the right, I'm on overview. I'll click create VM. Synology is asking which operating system I'm using. I'll click Linux there. I'll click next. It's asking me to select the storage. I'll click next, and then it wants me to give it a name. So I'll call it Ubuntu Desktop Synology. And then on the QNAP side, it wants a name first. I'll type Ubuntu Desktop QNAP. Uh, OS type is Linux. The version I'm using is 18.04. And now they both have uh, one CPU core I'm going to use. And I'll do memory. I'll do, say, three gigabytes of memory. Three gigabytes of memory. On the Synology, I'm going to click Next. On the QNAP, it's asking for the CD image here. I'm going to choose the desktop image. On the Synology side, it's asking for a virtual disk. I'll just do 50 gigabytes. I'll hit Next. On the QNAP side, it asks for the hard drive location. So one difference between the two is Synology um, already has set up in it like a default for the virtual machines. And on the QNAP, you choose on each instance. So I'll click Browse here, and I'll just choose Public. And then the hard drive storage here, I'll say 50 gigabytes. Next, we have the virtual switch on the QNAP side. And on the Synology side, we have the default VM network. And these are set up pretty much the same. So I'll click Next on Synology. So I'll choose my ISO. So on the QNAP side, we also have the assigned to QVM. That allows you to connect a monitor to the QNAP itself and use it like a desktop. And then you have a VNC password. I'm not going to use that on this instance. So I'll click OK on QNAP. It says they're recommending a password. I'm just going to say Create anyway. On Synology, I'll just click Next. It's asking who has permission to use it. I'll choose myself. I'll click Next. And it has power on the virtual machine after creation. I'll just leave that off for now. I'll click Apply. OK, so I have virtual machines uh, set up on both of these systems. I'll click on the Synology one, and I'll choose Power On. I'll go over to the QNAP one, Power On there. On Synology, I'll, I'll select it and click Connect. On QNAP, I'll just click on the uh, VM itself here, or the instance. So it looks like Synology has started a little bit faster. Or actually, I may have missed that screen on the QNAP, so I think the QNAP's actually ahead. So the QNAP has the install screen up. I'll click Install Ubuntu on it. Okay, the Synology is caught up. I'll click Install Ubuntu on it. I'll choose my keyboard on the QNAP side. I'm just going to do minimal installation. And I'll uncheck download updates. And I'll click Continue. I'll choose my keyboard on the Synology side. On the QNAP side, I'll say Erase Disk and Install Ubuntu. I'm going to choose Minimal Installation on Synology side not download updates. I'll click continue. QNAP's asking to write changes to the disk. I'll click continue there. 
Synology is asking to erase the disk. I'll say install now. Synology is asking to write changes to the disk. I'll click continue. QNAP is asking for my uh, time zone. It's uh, Chicago, so I'll click continue. QNAP is asking uh, who I am. <laughs> so I'll put my name. I'll name this. I'll click continue. Synology is asking for time zone. I'll click continue there. And it looks like QNAP is starting the install. And Synology is wanting my account. I'll click continue. And now Synology is starting the install. Okay, the QNAP is done installing. It wants me to restart now, so I'll click restart now. It says, please remove the installation medium. Press enter. I'll do that. I didn't remove the media. I just pressed enter. Okay, we're at the login screen on the QNAP. The Synology is still loading. I'll log in. Okay, the QNAP is booted, so it's at doing like a little intro thing. I'll click next here. Next. I don't want to send info. I'll click next again. And I'll click done. So the QNAP was quite a bit faster on install. The Synology is still loading up. Um, the Synology could be running other services, but I'm guessing the QNAP is just simply faster uh, at virtual machines, at least for what I'm doing here. So I'll let the Synology finish up and then I'll like test opening the web browser and things like that. Okay, the Synology is finally finished. We'll click restart now. Looks like the QNAP side timed out. Okay, we have the login screen on the Synology. I'll log in here. Okay, we have the little intro screens up on the Synology. I'll click through these real quick. So I'm going to let this sit for a few minutes so the Synology can bring up the software updater. Otherwise, it'll just be running in the background. Okay, so the two instances are at the same point now, and the QNAP was a lot faster than the Synology. And the Synology may be running other services that could slow it down, but even with those, I wouldn't think it'd be that much slower than QNAP from that. I think it's just uh, QNAP must have a better virtualization system. But if you have strong opinions on that, go ahead and leave them in the comments. Something weird here is that the Synology is saying it has 173.6 megabytes of updates, and the QNAP is 176.1 megabytes. So I don't know what the difference is there, considering these are brand new systems. I would think they would be at the same place. So... I don't know. I guess I could investigate that, but I'm just going to close that out for now. <laughs> so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to open up Firefox on both. Okay, so the QNAP is up. Almost. And now the Synology is loading. I think the QNAP is finally done loading because it loaded the new tab page and then this privacy notice in the background. And now the Synology is up. So the QNAP is quite a bit faster. So now I'll open up my website on both of them. So probably the QNAP was a little faster. I initiated the Synology before the QNAP and the QNAP came up shortly behind it, so they're about the same. It looks like it is still loading, both of these. So that was actually probably somewhat even. I'll load up like a new site of some sort.
So it looks like the QNAP's quite a bit faster. Okay, so in conclusion, we had the Synology on the left, the QNAP on the right. It seemed like the QNAP was consistently faster than the Synology. So if you're buying one of these devices just for virtualization, it would seem like the QNAP would probably be the better choice. Um, these have the same processor, same memory, same hard drive, but um, there was a big difference here, I think, in performance between the two systems. Uh, that being said, I don't know that either of these is great for virtualization. I don't know that I'd run a desktop on this as a regular thing. Um, I think this comparison would apply to servers also, and running a small server on this would probably not be too bad. And the fact that the QNAP is faster at the desktop, I'm guessing it would be a little bit faster at the server also. So if you have any questions about this, please leave them in the comments. If you like this video, please click like. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd appreciate it if you could do that. And thanks for watching. Until next time, goodbye.